What's happening YouTube? Back of the day gamer here. Thank you very much for tuning into my channel and today I'm very excited to bring you a new segment here on my channel that I've been working on for a while and it's finally getting off the ground. As you may know, I and most other YouTubers do pickup videos. I put out one once a month and a few months back I came up with the idea to showcase my favorite gem of the lot and do a little review playthrough on it to make sure you didn't miss out on a lot of these gems like I did, especially like with this game. So, if you saw my video back in October, I decided that my very first pickup of the month would be none other than Dick Tracy on the Sega Genesis. This game is awesome. It's tough as nails, but it's super cool. It is exactly how you would think a Dick Tracy game would look. Not like this one, not at all, like this one. So, without further ado, let's get rolling. I got my martini here ready to go, so let's quit talking and start playing. I bring to you, Back in the Day Gamers Pickup of the Month, Episode 1, featuring Dick Tracy on the Sega Genesis. So the intro screen kicks in, and right off the bat, I'm liking it. Just like I said, it's exactly how you would expect a Dick Tracy 16-bit video game to look. It's a little blocky and pixelated, but it kind of also fits in with the theme. Probably in the Prohibition era, you got your old-timey newsboy out on the corner here. Extra, extra! Tracy declares war on big boy! So you wouldn't expect it to be super high def, because this is, you know, back in the... back, back in the day. Every stage has different scenes, you know, stage one, scene A, scene two, scene B, in between them you get additional little cutscenes that describe the story, which is cool, because it describes the story well. You know, right here you see Dick Tracy talking to his watch, just like in the movie, his high-tech radio watch. You know, big boy's men seen down at the train yard. I'm on my way. So the game's essentially a side-scrolling platformer. Genesis controller's got three buttons. A, shoot your pistol. B, jumps. And C, shoot your Tommy gun up towards the top. So... It's essentially two games at once. Down here on the bottom, you got your side-scrolling platformer. Up top is your rail shooter. You're playing both games at the same time. As I said, the graphics are good. They're almost great. You know, they're a little choppy, a little pixelated, but like I said, goes in with the theme. Now the controls. The controls are part of the game that really shines. They are spot on, and they have to be, because you are actually playing two different games at the same time. So at the end of every stage, you get a little score summary, you know, stage 1A cleared, how much time you had, punch enemy bonuses, no break bonuses. I'm not sure what that is. Probably has to do with not breaking things in the background that you shoot, but I shoot it up. So that never applies to me. So, you know, jumping into scene B on stage one, I'm out of bullets. You made it to the train yard. So it explains why, on this board, you have no bullets. Jump and punch, and that's it. This board is the obviously least exciting. I mean, you don't have a gun. All these guys do. That kind of sucks. Well, not all of them. Some of them. Some of them have dynamite. If you had a gun, this board would be a lot easier. Essentially, you're just playing a waiting game at a lot of parts because they have patterns. You know, the guys in the maroon suits there shoot three bullets, then they have to stop to reload. I don't know what kind of gun only shoots three bullets at once. Pretty sure revolvers are at least six shooters, but you know, whatever. We're gonna forgive some historical inaccuracies. It is in fact just a video game. Here's the cutscene after that stage, which explains what happens next, and you are meeting your first boss battle. All the bosses are always up top, in the rail shooter section of the game. You know, this is only the first guy, so it's not that difficult. Now that I've got some experience under my belt, I don't really have much of a problem beating him. But when I first started playing this game, it took me forever. So I don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but the difficulty on this game borders insane. It's NES tough for sure, except it's on the Sega Genesis. So if you're lucky enough to actually defeat the boss, you're greeted with another one of these fantastic Dick Tracy cutscenes. And on to my second favorite part of the game, the bonus round. 
Once again, Sega Genesis controller has three buttons. Each one of these buttons represents one of those targets. Don't shoot the good guys, only shoot the bad guys. So there's our bonus scene results. I accidentally hit one good guy. So I don't think I was, um, I was penalized that much, but there you go. I earned two credits and 10,000 points. You're gonna need those credits because like I said, this game is tough as nails. So moving on to stage two, scene A. So on the warehouse board here, difficulty really starts to ramp up. Not only do you have your platforming guys here on the bottom level, but the rail shooter now consists of two levels instead of just one. To top that off, you got these boxes here that the enemies can hide behind to keep from getting shot. And there are a lot more boxes in the platforming area to have to traverse. So I cleared the warehouse and on to my absolute favorite aspect of this game, the cars. These car scenes are badass. Definitely my favorite part. Not only does it look awesome, but there's so much going on. Okay, so you're hanging out of the window of the car, standing on the running board, shooting at the guys in the other cars. You can make the car move back and forth, ramming this guy. You're also shooting the guys on the platforming version of the game. Just like before, you still got your platformer, still got your rail shooter. If you look up top, right in the middle, there's that little uh, icon. It's kind of your map for this board. I love this part. It's awesome. When you first start playing it, it's kind of tough to get used to because there's so much going on. This is only the first one of these drive-in scenes, so it's obviously the easiest. But as the game progresses farther along, you get to these boards, they're near impossible. It's multiple cars, multiple guys hanging out of each car. It's coming at you from every direction. Feels like it's never going to end. You don't really have time to look up at uh, your, your map. This part is great. To avoid the platforming guys, you can jump up on the car. You can also duck down below your car so the rail shooter guys don't hit you. I don't like to hide though. I like to have at it. Let's throw down. Dick Tracy's here to stop the bad guys. One thing I want to point out. So, you know, Dick Tracy, he's a cop. He's a good guy. Yet, he is spraying the town with machine gun fire. There's no way some innocent bystanders aren't getting hit. So once you get through the cardboard, here's the cutscene describing how you'll be fighting the next end boss. And if you remember the movie, you know, there's lots of different bad guys. You remember they made the characters for them? Those characters were great. I used to walk down to Target and buy them. Still have a bunch of them up in my parents' attic. I like how you can shoot the cars up. That's great. So you can't forget, there is a time limit here. And that makes it extra tough. Because I'm right at the... Oh, I only had six or seven seconds left. But I got him! On to another bonus round. These are great. Like I said... Whichever one of the uh, targets pop up, that's the button you push. Oh, and if you don't do it fast enough, oh, and you can't shoot the good guys either. I'm not doing very well here. I don't think I'm going to be earning many continues. Well, I did earn one credit, so I guess you're allowed to hit two good guys. The difficulty here on stage three is not enjoyable it took me so long to get past this board alone it almost made me quit playing the game but luckily I persevered and got past it because there is some fun to be had so after yet another fantastic car chase scene you come to the end of stage three where you're gonna be fighting another boss battle lips you got another cheesy cut scene here how nice of you to drop by Tracy Care for a Maltov cocktail? The heading on the board is, Drinks are on the house! Now this is another fantastic board in this game. So check out the graphics. You are in the nightclub. And you got guys coming at you from all sides. It's once again a platformer and a rail shooter. 
Fortunately, you have a gun here. You're not out of bullets. You don't have to use your fists. It's great how you can tear the place up. You know, in the background when you see things on the table, you can shoot them up. I found Lips to be the easiest of the three bosses I've faced so far. By no means does that make him easy. So once again, I want to remind you how difficult this game is. Anytime I mention it, or you hear another YouTuber talk about it, the common denominator is the difficulty factor. So I love the mechanics of these boss battles in this game. You know, you platform along the whole thing, fighting them along the whole board, and there's always a spot where it comes to a head. And that happens to be here, at the bar. He's chucking Molotov cocktails at you. You have to dodge them while still shooting him. You get to shoot up the bottles behind the bar, and if you are extra lucky enough, you defeat Lips for yet another fantastic cutscene by Dick Tracy. <laughs> you know, in every one of these cutscenes, it keeps the story flowing. Tells you what's going to be next. Just another great aspect of this game. Now, I'm going to be leaving it here. Because not only is this game rage quit frustrating, but I think I've taken this first episode of Pickup of the Month far enough from here. What I'm trying to come up with is a rating system to throw in at the end of these. Now, the three most important things for me in a game are graphics, control, and sound. I'm rating this, you know, the system's going to go one is crappy, two is average, three is good. Or really good. So on graphics, I give this a 2.5. You know, they are, they're above average, but they're a little pixelated. They could be better. They're almost great, but they're really good. So for that, I'm giving them a 2.5 out of 3. The controls are a 3. Hands down, no-brainer. Now the sound, it's just average. Giving it a 2. Nothing special. Could have been better. Definitely not bad. So out of, you know, if you got three choices where you could get three points on each one, we're working on a nine-point system. I'm going to add an extra point in if I feel the game deserves it. And the aspect of this game that I feel de deserves an extra point is difficulty. It's really difficult, but it's not impossible. It made me want to keep going instead of just throwing it down. It was close. It's a little more d difficult, and I would have hated it, but... They, they got me. They hooked me. So, graphics 2.5, controls a 3, sound 2. It's getting an extra point for the difficulty. That brings us to 8.5 out of 10. So that's an, that's an A in my book. Back in the day, gamers, pickup of the month, Dick Tracy, is getting two thumbs up. The game is fantastic. You got to pick it up. Everything about it I like. It's a winner. So that will do it for episode one of Pickup of the Month. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And until next time, YouTube, keep it retro!